as it is of the Wiltshire Plains. I think Paul Nash had a revelation here. And I think that revelation was this. You didn't have to go to Paris to find surrealism. You didn't have to read Sigmund Freud. You didn't have to go to bohemian restaurants and cafes. All you had to do was get out into the English countryside and you could find our own native surrealism everywhere you looked. Because after all, what's more surreal than the chance encounter of a modern artist and an ancient boulder in an English field? As the 1930s drew to a close, many of those artists who'd flirted with modern continental painting felt compelled to return to the British tradition. No one felt a stronger urge to do this than the last of the great interwar painters, John Piper. Early in his career, Piper had been at the centre of the British abstract movement. But this remarkable footage from 1937 captures him at the crossroads, torn between the British painting tradition and European modernism. In the last few months, I've been taking works from the London galleries to the Alexandra Palace and commenting on them and showing them. In the comments that I've made, I've tried to be impartial, but I've kept in mind all the time the high percentage of so-called modern art always to be seen in London galleries nowadays. This is a painting, a landscape, by the English master Thomas Gainsborough from the Agnew collection. It's an example of Gainsborough's early work before he went to Bath and executed his famous portraits. And this is a masterpiece of another kind. It's a contemporary painting by a Spanish artist whose work, although he's over 50 and his reputation is enormous, still causes many quarrels. His name is Picasso. This picture is very intense in colour and very lovely. I think quite as lovely in its own way as the Gainsborough in its way. And the battle for Britain is on. 30 enemy aircraft over the tunnel, flying due west. But it was the course of history that would now dictate the direction of John Piper's work. In September of 1939, Britain, once more, went to war with Germany. Mr. Jenny, take cover! With the outbreak of war, Piper abandoned his continental tastes completely and turned back to traditional British painting, determined to make art that reflected the apocalyptic mood of the times. He travelled through the barren Pennine Hills to Renishaw Hall, the home of author Sir Osbert Sitwell, a man convinced that the end of days had finally come. I, a citizen of the Sunset Age, an Englishman who saw the world's great darkness gathering, salute you, stranger, across the chasm. It may be that there's little immediate future for mankind and that only many centuries hence the ruins will be uncovered and our distant successors in some form of civilization will, as they contemplate the various buildings of which the very use is forgotten, wonder about the life of a people already forgotten, though so few hundreds of years have passed. It is difficult to know the end of the world when you reach it. Piper used to come up to stay a lot during the war, and I think it must have been a relief from what he was doing elsewhere. And um, Edith lived here during the war as well with Osbert. And so I think the two of them, I think they used to write all day, all morning they used to write, and so Piper really just had the place to himself. So I think that it was a very inspirational thing for Osbert to have commissioned him. 
Above all, my message is that the world could have been saved, perhaps still can be, through the spirit of man, especially through art, its noblest and most important manifestation. This is the Great Hall at Renishaw, and I'm tremendously excited to be here because I'm surrounded on all sides by John Pipers. Over there is a great big panoramic view of Renishaw and Bolsover and Hardwick Hall and the great Derbyshire countryside around. And behind me are a set of just truly wonderful portraits of Renishaw itself. The north front, the south front, and of course at the bottom, the stable block. But this picture is particularly exciting because it shows Renishaw seen from above, standing on the roof. And seeing them all together is quite a powerful experience because what you actually get the feeling for in this room is that it's a kind of altar to the English stately home, to that great enduring symbol of English civilization. But when you take a closer look at these pictures, you realize it's not just a celebration. Look at the dark skies, the ominous crenellations, the dead oak tree over there, and you begin to see that all of these pictures are filled with a sense of doom, of destruction, of peril. And of course, Piper made these in the midst of a terrible war, and his visits up here were a kind of refuge for him. But even then, that shadow of war, of destruction, of the obliteration of the English way of life is everywhere apparent. When you first arrive at Renishaw, it is quite daunting, and there is this extraordinary sort of luminosity, wonderful light. Glow, but quite gloomy at the same time, and it's got that sort of surprise element of, you know, what am I coming up to? What is going on here? What is this house all about? I think that's key to, to Piper and, and to Renishaw. But Piper's powers as an artist would be tested to the full when the apocalypse finally came. On the evening of the 14th of November, 1940, Coventry was the target of a devastating blitz. 11 hours of blanket bombing all but obliterated the city. When dawn broke the following morning, it was drizzling, and there was a mist over the town as men and women began to crawl out of their shelters to look for their friends and survey the ruins of their city. My mother and I were in the house alone when the bomb hit the house next door. Then the next day we started out and we walked. Hardly a building remained intact. Fires were still raging in every direction, and as we walked around the ruined streets, we hardly knew what to do. The greatest difficulty was to gather the children from the various parts of the city which was by this time pretty well a wreck. It seemed so hopeless with our homes and shops and places of work and so much of our lovely old city in ruins. You might say we were dazed. Piper arrived here at around 11.30 in the morning and nothing could have prepared him for what he saw. Firemen were still fighting the flames, bodies were being dragged out of the rubble, and everywhere the families of the missing were desperately searching for their loved ones. Confronted by scenes like this, Piper couldn't exactly get his sketch pad out and start drawing, so he found a secret vantage point, and from there set to work on a painting of immense emotional power. The ruins of one building stood out amid the wreckage. It was Coventry Cathedral. I don't think any family in Coventry, they didn't lose someone. You know, a lot of heartache was. We lost my auntie, uncle and three cousins in the, that blitz, 1940.
When I look at that painting, I do get a sense of sadness because it reminds me of me relations I lost. And that's what it is, it's a sad loss. It's a loss I don't want to see anymore. John Piper's little painting is often called Our Answer to Picasso's Guernica. Maybe it is, I don't know. But it's such a different painting. So much more British, so much more understated. There's no melodrama, there's no rage. There aren't even any people. But I kind of think that's the point. Piper doesn't need people because those ruins are the people. Those ruins are the whole of Coventry. And I think those ruins are the whole of Britain as well. Broken and burning, but at the same time, completely and utterly defiant, standing four square in the face of adversity. I'm sure that John Piper's painting softened the heart but hardened the will of all those who saw it. But I think all the painters of this period played their part in the war effort. Because it was their paintings that together gave us a vision of the England that we were fighting for. We shall defend our island. Whatever the cost may be, we shall fight on the beaches, we shall fight on the landing grounds, we shall fight in the fields and in the streets, we shall fight in the hills, we shall never surrender. In an age of anxiety, Artists helped Britain find itself again. With their paintings, they remembered a country to which all of us could escape. They invented a country that all of us could love. And as the shadow of a new war descended, they forged a country for which all of us could fight. And there's more art here on BBC HD tonight at half past 11 when we meet the Impressionists with Valdemar Janicek. <laughs>